I want you to take the time to imagine something. It's the spring of 1913, and you're attending an orchestral ballet composed by Igor Stravinsky. You sit in the crowded, sold-out theater waiting. The lights dim as the music starts to play. And it begins. Happy, upbeat tones echo throughout the theater, exactly as you expected from something with spring in the title, reminding you of warm air and sunshine, flowers and bumblebees, peace and prosperity, new beginnings. Then the music begins to change. It's subtle at first, but quickly dissolves into something alien, leaving you with an uneasy feeling. Sounds that you nor anyone in that crowded theater had heard before. A new combination of chords and tones that tear at the very fiber of your being. Then a commotion starts from the back. Quiet at first, it slowly spreads until the entire theater bursts into a riot. What just happened? Well, that's what we're about to find out. The scenario that I just described actually happened back in 1913. There was even an account of someone punching themselves repeatedly to the beat of the music. However, that's only half the story. Later that year in March, it was put on again. This time, it was just the music. A sold-out concert playing music that literally made people go mad. The result? Well, it was the exact opposite of the first time. People stood up and cheered at the end. It was a standing ovation for the music that drove people to violence earlier. What made this time different? Also, why didn't the musicians and performers go mad on the first night as well? Before we can answer all these questions, we must first understand how music and sounds affect us. Some have the power to make us feel immense joy and pleasure, while others make us feel sad or even scared. But how does this happen? Sound enters our ears and causes our eardrums to vibrate. These vibrations are then translated into electrical signals that are then sent to a part of the brain called the auditory cortex. This part's purpose is decoding these signals, analyzing them, and turning them into useful information that we perceive as sound. Now let's focus on a specific portion of the brain called the cortical fugal network. This portion is tasked with interpreting new signals from the senses and will change itself when presented with new information. Sometimes when this new information is presented to them, information that is too alien, they fail. This is what is known as a prediction error signal, and they will stop firing completely. But this is what's cool about these cells. After a few attempts, they will be able to translate that information and change their connections, so they are ready for the next time they run into it, thanks to the plasticity of our brains. But what happens if they repeatedly fail to understand this new information? These cells, like all brain cells, use dopamine to communicate, and once they've correctly identified the pattern and learned it, they release a little bit of dopamine. When they fail, however, they produce a lot of dopamine, which creates an uneasy feeling. And when they fail repeatedly, they continuously produce a lot of dopamine. If you know anything about dopamine, it's the chemical that makes us feel good when we do things we like. However, too much dopamine has the opposite effect. Fear, anxiety, aggression, delusions, hallucinations, and paranoia are just a few of the many effects that high dopamine levels have on the mind and body. People with schizophrenia have something similar occur, but to a much higher degree. Perhaps this is what happened on that spring night in 1913. New and strange sounds, the audience brains unable to crack the code, and a few assholes in a crowded theater start fighting, sparking a domino effect. But that doesn't quite explain why the musicians and performers weren't affected by the music to such a degree. The Rite of Spring has no clear discernible pattern. It's very dissonant, and dissonant tones can cause this spike in dopamine from the neurons. But what is dissonance? Well, that's a very good question. The opposite of dissonance is connoissance, and that's when there is harmony between notes, which means that dissonance is when there isn't. Dissonance is hard to pin down, but you know it when you hear it. It's frequently used in horror due to the uneasy feelings we get when we hear it. The theme music from Jaws is a perfect example of this. Despite these examples being dissonant, they're very catchy and sound oddly similar. If you listen closely, you can hear the pattern. Dissonant music isn't just for horror, however. It's been a staple of jazz music since its inception. If done right, dissonance can be very pleasant to listen to. Buried in the music is a beauty that you need to search for, one that isn't hand-fed to you. And there's a lot of music that utilizes dissonance to create a sense of motion. 
The Ready Spring was practiced multiple times before it was performed. Those involved in bringing it to show had to hear it over and over again, giving them a chance to learn those patterns brilliantly hidden in the music by Stravinsky. Those who came to the opening night were struck with new stimuli that literally blew their minds. A year later, it was performed again, and the only thing the audience had to focus on was the music, giving them an opportunity to find the patterns and beauty for themselves. Although some details of what happened that night are lost to history, what we do know gives us a better understanding of human nature. We can all agree that music has an incredible ability to move us in ways that we never thought possible. It inspires us, it can bring us to tears, it can put a smile on our face, it can make us run in fear or jump for joy. Music is powerful, and that's pretty cool. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a like and share it with someone who you think would enjoy it as well. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and criticisms in the comment section down below, and I will respond to them in my next video. If you'd like to support me, you can do so through Patreon. I've tried pushing for Patreon before, but I only offer early access to my supporters. Uh, so I have since realized that the purpose of the platform is for creators to give their fans something extra in exchange for financial support. So I have decided to relaunch my page offering all of the assets that I create for my videos, which can be used however you see fit. Uh, starting with the ones you see in this video, along with the ones I create for future videos. But you won't have to wait for the next video to be released to start receiving these new assets, because I will upload them as I create them, giving you real-time previews for upcoming content. With all that said, I hope you consider, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.